Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's our King, right? Amen. Right? Amen. The King of Glory. King of Glory. Hallelujah. Right. King of Glory. Amen. How many people love the things that are going on in the life? Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Amen. I want you to know, Sister um, Johnson is also working on a new area for us to get involved with, a new ministry for us to get involved with. So I want you to support her with your prayers. Amen. And we're, Amen. We're, we're, going, we're going to help her get it kicked off. Hallelujah. We're going to, we're going to invade this area. We're Amen. Going to invade Amen. Invade God. Right. 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 It belongs to us. Yes. So we, we want to pray and sow seed into all those ministries. And I'm thankful that people are taking up the burden of the Amen. Lord. Yes. Amen. And their desire. Yes. Amen. So we're, we're going to stand behind Amen. everything that yeah. everything that comes up, everything that we want to do. Right. Thank everything you. that God leads us to do. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. If you have a Bible, we want to turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Thankful that um, my wife is here tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I give honor to her. She's been laboring in prayer and laboring in, in uh, supplication and Reaching out right. to those that are in need. Yes. And helping Thank us you, get Lord. these ministries started off the ground. Yeah. Uh, thankful Jesus. today that everybody's pouring in. Amen. 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 In fact, it will be part of my burden tonight. Did we have a good time last Wednesday when we got together? Yeah. 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 Yes. Wednesday when we had church. So we're going to be continuing the second part of that particular ministry. So in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. Amen. That's the scripture verse that we have been working on. And um, so also I'm going to make mention of a a specific part of that. In verse 3 it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. 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 Endeavoring means, is the word spudazo. It is due diligence. It is to be diligent, to go forward, to study, or to labor. And if you're going to see anything happen you have to add that within your unity. You can be seated. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would help me tonight. I pray, Lord God, excuse me this morning. I pray that you would help me, Lord God, to lay out upon your people today, Lord God, what you have placed in my heart. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit would move again. And that the anointing of your spirit, Lord God, would strengthen and instruct us. Yes would come alongside of us and guide us, Lord God, as we are wanting, Lord God, to give you glory by the works, hallelujah, that you have assigned us to do, Lord, that you would help us to work as one powerful unit Amen. to give you glory Amen. and to bring to this area 
the salvation and the church that you are building. You want it to be a glorious church. Yes. That your name will get the glory and that many Amen. will be saved. Yes. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. We want to, as I was saying about endeavoring and, and due diligence and being diligent and going forward. And here where the scripture said, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called them, in one hope of your calling. That hope is the salvation. That hope is a relationship with God. For that one Lord and that one faith. And that one that's above all of us and in us all. And but but to unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of God. And so one of the things about making a unit or a team. In order to make a unit or a team, you have to have a group of people that are prepared to be able to uh, do what it is that God has sent them to do so then that it can all fit together. Yeah. You're going to have a whole bunch of different types of talents and abilities. Yeah. God is blessing us with talents Amen. and abilities. I'm excited about the future of the things yes. that are coming yes. when God comes and adds more people underneath yes. to be to do the works by the leadership that's developing here. Yes. And, and so, but in order for that to happen, any like for instance in a military unit, as I told you before, they give you a buddy system. They, they always give you a buddy, somebody you can work with, somebody you can train with. But in order to have a powerful group, you must also have individuals who are trained and ready. Oh, and it don't do no good if if one of them is a complete soldier and the other one is not. Right. They may have different abilities. One of them may be better physically or may be better with a bayonet or a knife. And the other one might be a dead aim as a shooter. Okay? But they're, they're no good if either one of them aren't properly trained to do at least uh, the basics. Okay, They don't know how to cover a person when they're on the move. Don't make no difference. You can shoot good or not. If you ain't gonna cover your, if you're not gonna cover your your partner, he's just in much danger. No matter how dead eye of a shot you are, doesn't make any difference. Right. If you don't know when to cover him, yes. or if you cover, you got him covered, but you don't cover yourself. Right. Okay, it, it's no good. And so it's the same thing. You know, um, if one of them doesn't run as fast, but um, he, he, and the other one can carry a little bit more, but if neither one of them ain't trained enough to, to run the, the amount of miles, it's not going to do any good. It's going to be running by himself. As I told you when I was in basic training, I had a, a buddy. Uh, it's hard to imagine somebody smaller than me, but I had a buddy smaller than me, and, and then he, he worked on a farm, but he didn't have no muscles. <laughs> and so we spent the whole time... Um, protecting him and helping him and then we we carried him on the last part of my, you know but he gave enthusiasm to it and, and he had a no give up spirit yeah. he didn't want to quit he didn't want to go back you know because they, they were thinking about sending him back he didn't, didn't want to go back to the farm and do nothing right. he right. didn't want to fail right. Right. And, and so you know that inspired our group to help push him forward yeah. Right. You know, and then all the stuff that we had to learn in order to become the basic parts of the soldier, as I say, some of them I had to do two or three times. Okay? But it caused me to be a better soldier. Right. right. But I knew I couldn't get out of it unless I helped him get out of it. Right. And so it developed a both of us because over time he got stronger. Right. You know, and he got a little wiser. And right. he got more confidence. You know, and, and so it, it helped us uh, to develop into a good unit and we were able to graduate with our peers yeah. and so well it's the same thing here we got to have unity we got to be able to lift one another up we got to be able to to believe hallelujah that god wants to use all of us yeah. and we got to yeah. have the same burden and the same feeling yeah. hallelujah for those who are going to work in the um <clears throat> in the nursing home ministry or those that are going to do outreach and the ones that's going to teach the bible studies but we all need to be prepared. Right. Everybody needs to be prepared to be able to share the word of God. That's right. Yeah, that's right. 
That's the most important thing. I, I, I would put that on the basic training side. Come on. Everybody needs to be able to share the word of God. You might be better at something else, but where are you going to share that? But everybody needs to be able to tell somebody how to be saved. Everybody needs to be able to explain to everybody and somebody else um, the workings of the Holy Ghost and the sensuality of the Holy Ghost and right. why we baptize in Jesus' name and that there isn't but one God. That's right. and we need to understand those things. We should be able to break down the Bible. Yeah. And so that's why I come out, I'm wanting everybody to get involved in some sort of Bible study, some yeah. sort of way. Yeah. You can't be here where Brother Trey is teaching it and get with somebody else and do it one-on-one, -on -one. but we want everybody equipped. Amen. We don't want to send a bunch of soldiers in the field with no ammo. Right. Okay. Right. You, you have to, like I said, you can be a dead, a dead eye shot, but if you ain't got no bullets, <laughs> come on, come on, that's true. You can just watch your comrades fall. That's right. You can't take no enemies out. Right. And so um, we, we want to be in unity with that. Amen. We want to be in unity yeah, with that. Good. And so you know that's where God had gave apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Okay. It's for the perfecting of the saints, yeah. for the work of the ministry, yes. and for the edifying of the body. Yes. You know, I've never been around a group of people and been involved with something that's in the Lord that as I'm working with them and sharing what I can do and watching what they do, I always end up better. That's right. I always yeah. learn from somebody else. I, I, I wish that I... I wish I'd have been as good at Sunday school as Sister Rose. I would have liked to learn how to do some yeah, of those things. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm learning very fast. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, and, and so these things help us. Yeah. It helps us. And so we want to be unified in all our efforts. Amen. We want to be unified in all our efforts. Um, in verse 15 it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to effectual working in the measure of every part, make of increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And so uh, after a while, when we all start working together, our talents will rub off on each other. Right. And the whole body gets better. Amen. And the whole body gets stronger. And the more... Uh, areas that we can cover and the more different ways we can bring uh, people into a saving grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so that's what God is doing. He's blending a good team here together. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. And we're all going to get steadfast and we're all going to study and we're all going to do diligence and we're all going to uh, put our efforts fully into uh, our part of the body. Right. Okay. And after that, when the body is joined together, Oh, Lord, everybody's going to supply something, and then the whole body's going to get strong. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then the devil, the devil, look out. Amen. Amen. Look out. The apostolics are coming. That's right. Hallelujah. The truth is going to be marching up and down in our area. That's right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about what, what God is doing among us and what he's going to do Amen. among us. Praise God. And so now... There, there's some differences here, some things that I want to um, share with us today. Um, in Acts chapter 1, verse 2, there's just a little, little something here. Until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Okay? And so um, we are working with people that are chosen of God. That's right. You're not here by an accident right. or here on your own accord. You were called into this ministry. Right. You were called into this ministry. And, and so um, God has entrusted in you and expects results. Amen. That's yeah. right. So we need to have confidence in one another Amen. because God has confidence in each one of you. Right. Right. And Amen. He has confidence Amen. in each one of you. That's right. And, and so one of the things here that I wanted to note out um, in the Gospels when Jesus was on the earth as he was building the team okay, as he was getting them together and getting them ready 
there was a whole lot of instances where you saw disunity amongst them. That's right. That's right. And, and so Jesus had to work on that. Okay, it took, um, with all the miracles Jesus did, he might could have stayed his ministry one year and it would have been over with. But it took three years because he had to get them to work together. Right. He had already empowered them. Remember, he sent them out. And they were able to do uh, miracles and all these different things, but they weren't always unified. Okay. There was still a lot of showing off and still a lot of, you know, I, I want more of Jesus' attention than right. you have. Amen. And all these sorts of things. And so we, I want to examine some things that is wrong for unity. And then I'm going to show you what God did later to create a better unity. Okay. Right. In Genesis chapter 11, I want Brother Walter to go there and we're going to read from Genesis chapter 11. And we'll be talking about the time frame there after the flood. Well, you can read from um, 1 to verse 9. And this is just to give you an idea. Genesis chapter 1. No, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Sahanar. And they dwelled there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone. And slime had they for mark. And they said, Go to let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach into the heavens, and let us make us a name. Least we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they did, and this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there form their language Confound. that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Bethel. That's, that's Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. From thence did the Lord scatter them abroad into the face of all the earth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And so let's examine that because what I want to, to present here is wrongful motives. Mm -hmm. Wrongful motives. Okay, uh, how they got involved in doing um, in unity, but their unity was not the will of God. Okay, they unified for the wrong reasons. They got out of God's purpose. Right. You remember the instructions to them before was to go and fill the whole earth. Yep. Okay, with people because this is after the flood, so all the people upon the earth are gone now, and so God has developed these and as. Uh, they came out of uh, Noah's descendants, but God wanted them to spread all over the earth. Okay? Amen, right. And so as they were spreading all over the earth, when they got in this plane, because of things that they saw during the time that they were traveling, you, you, you travel through the forest for a little while, you're going to see some stuff. Because Amen. Amen. now it's been a little bit of time. It's been a few generations. So right. as they have grown, so have the animals. Okay, so have the uh, other things that's in the earth. 
And right. so, so there was some fears that start to, to, to grow up inside of them. You know, uh, all the animals, you know, they, it, it's not like the Garden of Eden. You know, they, they still eating meat mm -hmm. right. and all these different things. It's not on the ark. They're not just getting fed one thing to eat. Okay, they're going back to their nature. Okay, right. and so um, that put them in some different positions. And I'm quite sure all that travel as far as they went, you know, and so some strategy began to come. Right. And so God said, you spread all over the earth, but they're looking at, they got in this plane. Let me tell you what a plane does. Okay, when you're, when you're in a plane place, and it's a large plane place, and you get in the middle of it, somebody tell me what can't happen if I'm in the middle of a plane. What can't happen? Yeah, what can't happen? What can't Yeah, what can't happen if I'm in the middle of a plane? You can be attacked. Say again? You can be attacked. You can be attacked, but, okay, what can happen, you can't sneak up on me. Right. Oh, yeah. If I'm in the woods, and we are, and you hiding all the trees, and you hiding all the places, then I could be walking and you come out of nowhere. Right. Okay? That's usually how most, most wars and combats are. Mm -hmm. you, you hide yourself from the enemy to the point of attack. But if they get in the middle of a plane, they can see clearly. The enemy right. can't sneak up on them. That's right. And so it was a safety idea with them mm -hmm. that we get in the middle of this plane. Nothing's going to be able to run up on us like it has while we've been traveling through the forest. Right. This would be a good place to settle. Right. I'm pretty sure it was a water there as well. You know, we got everything we need. We got some safety and we got some provisions. Right. And so we're going to sit right here. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and the Lord can scatter somebody else all over the earth. Right. <laughs> and so, so usually when you get one purpose that overwhelms the will of God, then it will start to affect a whole lot of other purpose. Yeah. That's yeah. Because human beings have an emptiness inside of them, a void place. You know, God made sure that there's an emptiness somewhere in your heart that only he can feel. That's right. Yeah. right. And so everybody's going to have to have a God, whether it's, I don't care whether you make one or whether you find one or if not, you'll make up one or the God will just be you. Everybody got a God. And so after a while, they're sitting there in that plane and they got to have a God. And so this one man, he starts to rise up. And as he rises up and, and, and he became a great hunter and he became a great leader, and everybody started listening to him. Right. And so that's why come they stayed there uh, to build that tower. Okay? They want to build that tower. Amen. Because they, they, they began to be void of worship and void of leadership. So this man got them, they start building cities. And they start not doing what God wants them to do. And God's like, I need the earth filled. <laughs> I can't call. I can't call Abraham till y'all get where I'm trying to send y'all to. I can't call Abraham and I can't call the Jews. And if I can't call the Jews, I can't send Jesus Christ. Right. Come on. Okay. I got. I got to get y'all. How can I get them back in the will of God without you know? I don't want to have to slay them again. That's right. And, and so that's uh, why God scattered their language. Okay. He said to him and the angels, they came down and said, let's go down there and confound their language. Yes. Okay? Um, because it's a good thing to be unified, and they were unified with all but one speech. Okay? Right. But, but since when they got out of the will of God, then God had to break up right. their unified talking. Right. Okay? And so we need to have good communication, but we got to be careful what kind of communication we have. Uh -oh. Because if you have the wrong communication, then God's got to get in the middle of it and fix it. Right, that's right. Okay. right. It starts to become a problem within the kingdom of God. It starts right. to become a problem between people. And, yeah. and you know now we're in a communication age. Right. Okay. And the stuff that's being said is just making the earth more and more and more corrupted because it's not centered in the will of God. Right. Right. We can't have that in the church or we'll be just like them. Right. Hallelujah. We'll be talking crazy after a little while. Right. Okay, everything will start being confused. That's what babble means. When somebody's babbling, you can't understand what they're saying. Oh, right? Man. Glory to God. Jesus. Glory to God. And so it's important what comes out your mouth. Yes, man. It's right. important what comes out your mouth. Right. Okay. Man. Whatever you say is supposed to be for edifying, for building up, for helping, for encouragement. Okay, and, and so we, we want to make sure that we stay unified in our efforts 
But our efforts got to be toward the will of God. Amen. And we don't, we don't want to get involved with anything other than it's going to cause brothers and sisters to start our brothers and sisters start pulling apart from each other That's and right. being discouraged and being confused. Right. Because you see what happened here. The reason why come they start doing this, there was a motivator that caused them to want to do that. Right. Fear. Right. right. When they start looking at fear more than faith, then they start getting another idea different than God. Fear is not of God. That's right. Okay? And so when they got that fear get in and then it grew, next thing you know, they're not doing what God wants to do. Right. right. And so God has to scatter them apart and, 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 and start them all over. And you ever think about that? It's, it's so interesting that when God wanted them to move there, that he changed their language. And then when he wanted them to move in the, next, in the, in the New Testament, he changed their language. Amen. That's how powerful the, the, the tongue is. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Okay? It's how powerful it is. You know, it can be a benefit or, or it can be an unruly member. That's yes, right, right, man. Yeah. An unruly so member. It, it can just get everything all confused yes, and it, right. everything get dismayed and may God have to use other means to get his will done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 And so God understands wrongful unity. Okay. And so we need to make sure that we understand uh, ungodly unity. Go to Acts chapter 5. Brother Roy, why don't you read for me Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it still remained, was not thine own? And after it sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yes, yeah, for so much. And then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them that which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead. And carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest of the earth, no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. Okay, and that's good. That's good. Okay. So what, what, what I want to, us to see here, and it goes along with um, what happened there in Babel, because the wrong motive was in there. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And so um, I wrote a note there that motive is the motive is the ingredient that poisons the true purpose of unity. Wow. Mm. Uh, somebody's motive or a group of people's motive is not right, it will poison the reason for God's unity. Mm, amen. Okay? And so then those, the mouths get to shooting off and they start spewing out poison. Mm -hmm. That's why, if, if you ever study snakes, serpents, okay, you'll find out a lot about the character of the devil. Mm. Yeah. I know that some people, you know, they, they uh, I said that a couple of times, and some people that just love uh, Snakes and serpents, they, they got upset, you know, but I was trying to tell them that, you know, it's not for you to hate the idea that God created them, but what God had used them in so many different examples teaches us um, the um, the approach that the devil does, okay? God didn't do that by accident. He knew exactly what he was doing. That's right. Okay? He knew exactly what animal, 
okay, can represent the way that the Lord, I'm sorry, the way that Satan will work against you, right. okay, and anything that got venom in it is, is not good. That's right. Amen. And, and, and so it will poison God's purpose in unity. One tongue, hallelujah, can come and destroy uh, almost an entire church if it's not dealt with. That's right. Okay. So you best believe we will be watching mouths. You need to put your fingers in your ears if somebody's trying to push you away from unity. That's right. If somebody's trying to poison you about somebody else. Right. Okay. Uh, you put your fingers in your ears and say, well, I'll pray for them. That's because right. that's all you can really do. Amen. Amen. If somebody is going in the wrong way, or maybe they don't understand something, then you need to pray right. okay, that God will give them understanding or God will remove the thing that's hindering them. Amen. Right. You know, yeah. and, and so we, we got to make sure that we have something because we don't want to poison okay, what God gives us. Okay? Right. As you see how quickly that God is growing this church. We, we may not have the numbers that other churches have, but for a church that's only been together for a short time, it's very mature here. Amen. Okay, and the reason is is because of the unity. Amen. Okay, the one, uh, the love one to another. That's what's causing us to be successful. That's why I come. God will show up in here and pour His Spirit out when we need Him, and when we want Him, and when we worship Him. Because there's a unified effort here. There's actual love one to another. We we want to keep that protected. Yeah. Because right. that's what's going to propel us to the next level. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Been involved in those sort of things a long time. And, 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 and so when that starts to get in even a small ministry, it'll destroy the whole thing. Yes. Okay? And then it takes us a while to recover it. Okay? Because it's not that God won't move against it. It's that people sometimes take a long time to get the point. Mm. Once they're poisoned, okay, um, then after they're poisoned, they got to heal. And then after that, you know, they get they get gunshot. They don't want to go nowhere. They don't want to walk in the woods no more. They don't want to. They don't want to go out where God want to send them at no more. They right. they worried about their feelings. They start covering up. Right. right. That's true. Okay. And so we, we need people going forward. We don't need people backpedaling. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 And so this couple here did the same thing. Okay. And so they were selling a possession in order to build up the ministry and then change their mind. Okay? And so their they motive wasn't right. They kept part of the price. You know, so when you don't give something up, give something to God, make up your mind. Amen. Usually your first thought was right. <laughs> All right. All right. What usually happens is people start to do something, then they start thinking about it. You know, if I give this, then I can't do this and that and that. Maybe I'll just get half of it. This, you know, and, and that'll make you back off. Okay, and so uh, faith don't operate in gift. No. Okay, and and, and I'm, I'm just being human. Okay, I, I, I've been there. You know, the no sooner I say I'm gonna give something to God, then the devil won't start talking. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and so I tell me thinking, well, maybe not that much, and I'll be like, uh, -uh. Yeah. <laughs> whatever I decide to do, that's what I'm gonna do. Because God can make it up to me. Right. You know, God can help me with it. God can add to it. Right. Okay? Because yeah. if, if you go backwards, <laughs> it might take you a while to figure out what's going wrong. That's right. That's right. Remember the Bible says you are cursed with the curse. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, I would think that would not only operate in money, that would operate in effort. Right. That would operate in prayer. That would operate in, in, in all the different departments of your life. If you start off giving God 100% and then break down to 60. Jesus. Mm. Uh, that, that won't get the job done. That's, no, that's, not, faith. No, no. that's not faith. That's not faith. And so, um, so when he was wrong there, he went and stood in front of the man of God. And he, he, got his, he read them. And then after that, he, he fell down at his feet. <laughs> and um, he, he got what I, what, what I call the, um, the, a, a fast food burial. You know, no so he dropped, they took him right out and put him in the ground. Right. You know, he, he didn't call everybody, wasn't no obituary. Right. They didn't put him in the paper. You know, <laughs> nobody knew he was dead with the apostles. I mean, and, right. and the disciples, they buried him. And then when his wife came, that's why she didn't know nothing about it. She didn't see the obituary. And she came in, being privy to it, 
and came in there and, 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 and then when she had a chance to correct them, you know, uh, I, I know we, we men don't like being corrected by our wives, but it's been a good time <laughs> to be corrected. Yeah. Right. You know, did, did, you, did he get a lamb for so much? And, and she just went on to agree with him. Mm. Okay, and next thing you know, um, she got the fast food burial. Yeah. Wow. No. Just on. instant. You know, they took her right out and put her right next to her, and she ended up in the same boat, you might say. Right. And so I don't want to be in the same boat with unbelievers. That's yeah. right. Hallelujah. If I'm going to believe God, I'm going to believe God to the uttermost. Yeah. I don't want nobody talking me out of nothing. No. I don't want nobody talking me into nothing. No. If you don't, go, if, if somebody don't want to go with me, I'm just going to go and they'll catch up. Yeah. Amen. That's it. That's it. Yeah. They'll catch up. Right. You know, when God puts something on your heart to do, hallelujah, if you get the proper permissions and all that, go on and do what you got to do and, and let the game sayers uh, Get their own game. That's right. Amen. Don't let them stop your game. That's right. You just do what you got to do. Amen. And I, trust me, I've been laughed at and called stupid and called Amen. wasting my time and all that sort of stuff. And, but I know a lot of people that are talking in tongues because I went on and did what God told me to do. I know a lot of people got their back to me correctly because I did what God said to do. And so you can't worry about them. You serve the God. You ain't serving man. That's right, right, right. right. Amen, amen. And, and yeah. God will bless you in ways that men me couldn't bless you if they wanted to. Come on, yeah. Come on. Come on. So let's talk about it. Usually when that's going on, there's a couple of spirits. Man, this ain't on my notes. There's a couple of spirits that get in that. Hallelujah. One is bitterness. Right. When people are bitter, they don't want to see nobody else be successful either. That's right. Right. So they're going to put everything down that somebody do. Every effort down. They're going to talk about the pastor. They're going to talk about the ushers. They're going to talk about the Bible study teachers. They're going to talk about everybody. Right. It ain't never happy because they ain't happy with they self. Right. Right. Misery loves company. You know, It's not a scripture, but it is a good principle. Because yeah. miserable people, they just want everybody miserable. That's right. And so we, we don't want that. Uh, that spirit, when you feel a spirit of bitterness getting on, it's time for you to cut all your food off. That's right. Yeah, it is. Come on. It's time to get rid of all, all the food and everything else. Yeah. Hallelujah. And get in some prayer meetings and stick your face in the Bible until you get cured. Come on. Amen. Yeah. That's true. Because it, it, remember, it will defile many. That's right. It will defile many. So the people we pray for, that's the hang up. Yes. Amen. They're, they're, they're hanging out somewhere else because they hung up on something else. When they should be here in the church, but they hung up on something that happened a long time ago. That's good. You know, you got to be able, you got to loose yourself from being hung up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right. You got to loose yourself. Right. You know, you, you, don't, you can't do nothing. You can't go nowhere with a hook in your back. That's right. Mm. That's right. So you got to make sure that you stay free. Right. It's the only way you're going to be a benefit to the kingdom of God. That's right. Amen. The only way you're going to stay a benefit to the kingdom of God. Right. Amen. And so these these two, you know, they, they end up in a bad situation because they wouldn't let their heart stay right. That's right. Okay. And so um, <clears throat> the unified, uh, unified allowed the fear of God to ignite their faith in God. Okay. This is, this is a different situation that we're going to go into. Okay. Um, when they died, okay, read verses 11 through 12, brother. Acts chapter 5, 11 and 12. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Amen. 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 All right. And so, anybody know who Ben Franklin is? Mm -hmm. Ben Franklin made a statement way back when they were opposing Britain, when they were wanting their freedom. And he made this statement. I thought it would be a good thing for us to hear. We must all hang together or we shall all hang separately. Wow. That's right. Good. That's what happened to them. You know, 
We all got to hang together. We all got to hang together with, with the purpose of God. Amen. The Amen. purpose of freedom. Because if not, we don't hang separate. Amen. Okay? You, you, you be hanging out with the wrong people, hallelujah, it's a death sentence. Yeah. Right. It'll destroy your soul. Yes, it It'll destroy, it destroy, destroy your faith. And right. then you won't know what you want to do. Right. And, and God will operate in confusion. It's, it's not of God. But when he went on in verse 14, it says that believers were, uh, were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick in the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. Okay? And so, and there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one, okay? And so it was like, you know, the internet was already working, okay? When they, when they heard what was going on in the church, it was just pouring out everywhere, yeah. okay? And so because they were unified in their efforts, yeah. okay, that's the reason why come when they all got together and they brought the people in, God healed every one of them. Amen. Yeah. God did all kinds of miracles. Okay, because there was no schism in the middle of it. Right. They were a team. They were a group. You know, nobody wasn't thinking. You know, it's funny. They went back to the way it was when Pentecost came. That's right. That's right. Okay, they start giving their possessions, the Bible says, and they brought everything together. That's the same thing that happened after Pentecost. Okay, when they was in one mind and one accord. And, but as they continued on building the church, the Bible talks about, you know, no man thought about anything as if it was their own. But they had all things in common. Okay, they went back to, okay, so they went right back to that. Okay, and once again, God began to move with power. Okay, and in the end of Acts 2, when they were doing like that, people were added to the church daily. And here they were saying they were having multitudes. Okay, I'll tell you what, you know, old-fashioned things are the best things. Amen. You know, uh, it, it, it's good to do a little bit of moderation and, and, and try to keep up with the times a little bit, but... Uh, my thing is moderation without conviction is compromise. That's right. Woo! I'm not compromising Amen. nothing. Amen. Because if I continue doing it the right way, God yeah. is going to bless it. Yeah. I don't got to change to fit everything that's Come modern. That's I mean, right. we're using computers and we're using other things, but we still got to walk holy. Right. Right. I mean, we still got to do things. We still got to love one another. Right. 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 We don't need to conform ourselves down so we can have a group, a whole big group of teenagers. I think if the teenagers are hungry for God, and when they start feeling God and God starts moving in their life, they're going to stay and they're going to tell somebody else. Amen. Okay? Amen. You know, they, they, we were the church was getting big before we start doing a whole bunch of other stuff that we ain't got to do. Right. If your witness and your prayer life and the way you live is effective, people are going to get saved. Amen. 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 People are going to want the same God that you follow. Yeah. Right. And they'll learn how to, to spend the right amount of time with Him. Right. Amen. Okay, uh, like I said, in the multitude out of the cities, okay, cities, it was multiplying, okay, unity of faith brought in gathering, faith multiplied in the kingdom, okay, uh, faith is multiplied uh, in, in kingdom math, this is what T.F. Tenney said, faith is kingdom currency, amen. Faith is kingdom currency. Yeah. The more faith you have, the more the mo more money that God's going to put on you, or the more uh, blessings and gifts that God's going to put on you, the more faith you have. When you have doubts and schisms and you're hard-headed and you don't want to work with people, then you live in poverty. That's right. That's right. Amen. Because God doesn't operate in the middle of that. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. In Acts chapter 5 verse 3 it says, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Okay? And so what do you see Jesus as? And as we are, and we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost who God hath given to them who obey him. Amen. That's the key word there. Those who obey him. I remember um, at one point when the apostles were being opposed and they were having a revival. And so it, one scripture says is that when they were threatening them, saying, did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? 
And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Okay? And Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Okay? And so we ought to obey God rather than men. Okay? Because we want the doctrine to spread through our city. Right. But what I'm looking at here, those that were opposing him, they don't, have you noticed now they're intimidated? Right. They're intimidated because the doctrine's getting spread through their whole city. They're complaining. Right. They're not complimenting them. Right. They're complaining because they can't stop the doctrine from getting in the whole city. Right, right. Okay, and so if the small group of us are, are um, <clears throat> diligent and unified, um, all the cities around us, they're going to receive the word of God. Amen. And it don't make no difference who opposes us. It don't make no difference who had a problem with it. It don't make no difference what they say about us. If we stay unified, God's going to operate in our behalf. Amen. Right. And we're going to see our desires upon us, upon us Amen. because we're sticking with what God wants to do. Right. Amen? Amen. 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 That's why I come 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what community have light with darkness okay and so that's why come we need one another Amen. Right. Amen. right the world is not going to see things uh, the way that we see things right. amen? Amen. Amen. amen amen go to Acts chapter 14 Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 14, and it says, And it came to pass in Iconium that they were both together in the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brothers. Okay? And so uh, that's one of the tools of Satan to try to attempt to destroy the unity and influence. Okay, by having some of the unbelievers that's mixed in there, and then they start making other people's minds evil affected. Okay, right. okay. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. Mm -hmm. And when there was an assault made both on the Gentiles, uh, of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and stone them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Okay, how big as the apostles stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city and the next day he departed with Barnabas the Derby. But see, they kept their faith unified. They went there and stood around Paul. I don't know if they prayed or not, but they didn't allow all of this to shake them. Right. Right. Yeah. And then their brother got rose up. Okay. And they continued, the Bible says after that in verse 21, and they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many. They returned to Lystra and to Iconum and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through uh, much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? Yeah. And so that's one thing that we're going to have to do. So when they had unified faith, their efforts and their faith helped Paul rise up. It confirmed the souls. It exhorted them to continue in the faith, and it brought them through tribulations and ordained ministers. Right. Okay? And so look how many things happened because they stayed unified. Right. Right. They kept their minds on what God wanted to do, and they kept their hearts and their minds right toward each other. Amen. And when they helped each other with their efforts, okay, uh, the revival could not be stopped by all the efforts, by all the gainsayers and the people that was trying to stop us. That's right, right. Okay, that's why we had to continue in this, this powerful unity that God has built. The devil don't like our unity, but he don't have nothing to do with it. It's up to us if we're going to keep unity. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's up to us if we're going to help one another. So it's up to us if we keep, hallelujah, helping one another be what they want. In the earlier days, the apostles, um, as Jesus was missing, they made statements like this. Who is the greatest among us? Yeah, that's right. Okay? They, they were concerned about that. Okay? That's in Matthew chapter 18, verse 5. Okay? And so Jesus answered to that in verse 4 was, uh, excuse me, 
verse 3, it says, um, And verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Right. And whoso re shall receive one such little child in my name, receive of me. Yeah. And so, once again, attitude. Mm -hmm. The attitude that Jesus was trying to put in them. Another one, in John chapter 21, verse 21 through 23, Peter seeing him saying to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? He's talking about John. Jesus said unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. You know, no whatever's going on with your brother, you see like he's doing better than you, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay? God knows what you're able to deal with. God knows what he's able to deal with. That's right. God knows what's going to give him glory in your life, and God knows what's going to give her glory in, wow. in her life. Right. Okay? Don't get caught up in what, how well somebody's being used. Continue to let God use you. Amen. Yeah. I'm just glad to be part of the kingdom. Because yeah. the rewards is the same. Yeah. We're going to the same heaven. Yeah. We're going to be saving the same earth Savior. That's right. you know, so I want to make sure that I keep my attitude toward yeah. uh, you correct. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Um, and John answered, and said, answered him and saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us. And we forbade him because he followed not us. But Jesus said, forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall uh, give you a cup of water uh, to drink in my name because ye belong to Christ, really I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. But what he was meaning there, uh, but we, we don't need to beat up the other people that's doing things for God. Because a lot of us that are in here, we had some other belief it, it, it wasn't quite this far, but we didn't have that. It would have been hard for us to have what we'd be seeing now. That's right. All right. Amen. Okay? Right. And so when you use that the proper way, uh, God can help you get to another place, and then you can go back and reach for some of them and bring them up to speed where you're at. Right. But if you have an attitude against them and then you try to start trying to stop them, you're doing the same thing that these other people were doing to try to stop the kingdom of God. So we don't want to get upset when people don't have what we have. That's what we need to be praying for. Right, because these ways, they're on their way. Right, right. They're on their way. Yeah. And so our attitude can either help them or hurt them. Amen. Amen. And so later on, here's how these men got known. Acts 17 and 6 says, And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren onto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down uh, have come here, uh, have come hither also. Now, the people that was putting them down, that was worried about them, now they're intimidated by them. Right. Mm. Right. They're worried about them turning the world upside down. Right. They couldn't cause them fear, but the fear has turned on them. And so very powerful, very beautiful, where God wants to take us. Amen. Amen. Where God wants to should take us. Yeah. Amen. All right, I'm almost done. Please stand. Praise Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When they were doing things before, everybody was doing their own thing. But when they began to get unified, their statements start going, look on us. And then the actions in the Bible said they and them instead of just one individual. Yes. And so as they began to operate that way, they got more and more powerful. God did more and more things unto them and caused them to turn their world virtually upside down. Right. 
They began to say things like, look on us. And Peter and John's team, they helped the man to get beautiful. Peter and John had those things against each other, getting Jesus' attention. But when they got reunified again, they told the man, look on us. And then he got a miracle. And when he got that miracle, he ran into the temple with that miracle. And then all the rest of the people joined him as well. Okay. And so that power of unified faith brought very powerful results. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 So I'm thankful today that I'm walking in a place with a bunch of unified people. Amen. 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 Thank you. We can't allow schisms to get in. We can't allow, hallelujah, um, wanting to jump over people, you know, um, and wanting to, uh, do you got more God than I got? That's right. You know, right. it's all the same God. But if, if, I tell you what, if, if I think you got more God than I got, then I'm going to increase my prayer. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm just going to try to climb up there. Amen. Amen. There's, there's no sense in, in because jealousy and envy is a very destructive oh, force yes. in Amen. the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 We, we're not going to allow it in this place. Right. We're going to defeat it. Amen. 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 This is you can sing. I want to be a willing vessel. Hallelujah. That song is becoming a model for us. Amen. I want to be a willing vessel, the instrument you choose. I want to empty of myself, available to you. Let me be a willing vessel, be a willing vessel, be a willing vessel. You can use Revelation 20 and 14 says And the wall of the city had 12 foundations And he them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb They all were 